All right, what's up, savages? So today we are at Black Rifle Coffee Company. It's no longer the headquarters. Uh, headquarters down in San Antonio, right? San Antonio. So this is a satellite office here in Salt Lake City, Utah. And we are here with Jeff Kirkham. I didn't even know that you were one of the founders of Black Rifle Coffee Company. Yep, yep. So just found that out today. Can you tell us a little bit about, I mean, I was really surprised to find out a ton of stuff that you do here. Yep. Ready Man, Rats, Black Rifle Coffee Company. Savage Gentleman. Savage Gentleman. Yeah. But the, you know, kind of the primary is is Ready Man. Okay. So, and Ready Man is our, you know, survival gear and training, and that's really, that's my, I'm a silent partner with Black Rifle, so I don't have anything to say in the day-to-day -day operations. Okay. Other than I cheer them from the side, and I'm like, yeah, that's great, keep doing more. Wear the sweater. Wear the sweater, yeah. So, All right. But uh, my day-to-day -day is Ready Man and Rat Strike. But you get the people, and these are the people that I'm so fascinated with. Tourniquets are stupid. All tourniquets are stupid. I'm just going to wear a belt. I'm just going to use a belt. I'm just going to improvise a tourniquet. Sure, could I go out and be like properly prepared? I mean, I EDC, so of course I should probably carry a tourniquet, but I'll just use a belt. The problem you run into with a belt is, can you use a belt as a tourniquet? The answer is yes, you can. However, the technique of doing that is not obvious, and you have to be shown how to do that. Just putting a belt around and trying to crank it down tight, you can't get the mechanical advantage that you need for full occlusion to stop the blood flow, especially when we start talking about legs. Mm -hmm. So on that one, you probably need a windlass unless you've got some other crank over device that's on there, but that's not, that's not, in, you know, it's not built into the belt. And so with belts, can you use a belt as a tourniquet? Absolutely. It's not as easy as most people think. Uh, on there and then you run into problems with it when it's uh, coming in down and stuff like that. So, and, and most of the time when we see belts used as tourniquets, those, they will reduce the blood flow, they're not going to stop the blood flow, mm -hmm. so it may reduce the blood flow enough that then you can get in there and pat the wound, which is, you know, it's a good thing, hey, that's, that's great, so you stop the bleed. But uh, you, you need a little bit of a mechanical advantage to get in there to compress enough tissue to reliably shut down the blood flow. That makes sense. What was your answer to that? Well, it, you know, as I was going down the rabbit hole of coming up with another tourniquet, I, I, I wanted to say, well, hey, what if, what if we had, what if we built it, if we could figure out a way to build it into a belt? And so it's not just the belt, and, the, and my rationale was this, how many times have you woken up at night and you're in the middle of the dark and you're half asleep and you still manage to buckle your pants and put your belt on? In the Marine Corps? Drunk? All the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> and so that's where it's like, well, that's good training. I can find that in the dark. I can do it when I'm half asleep. I can do it when I'm drunk or I can do it when I'm, whatever that is, it still works. So it's, so I went back and I was like, hey, well, how do I, how can I make a belt, a tourniquet? And so I looked at all the other ways They were too bulky. And then I was actually, I was at a uh, off-road driving course and we were, we were uh, retrieving a vehicle that had gone off the road. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the retrieval system and I was like, wait a minute, because we we're using pulleys and lines. And I was like, well, wait a minute. If I have a pulley and a pulley and I come along here, then I can use this system in a belt. And so what I came up with, with uh, one of my earlier uh, patents is this. So this is this belt is made out of biothane. You mm -hmm. can make it out of anything. I just picked biothane because it's great for the concealed carry crowd. Okay. But it's also this is a good looking belt that's here. And and a lot of this this is your last ditch belt, right? <coughs> so, you know, if you take your belt off, <coughs> obviously <coughs> You've got to figure out something to do with your pistol or something. Mm -hmm. But you may be in an area where you don't have your pistol on you because you're in a bar or you're in a casino or you're in a no gun zone. Right. <coughs> and those exist. So now you've always got a tourniquet on you. So the way that this works, this is a roller. That roller acts like a pulley. Mm -hmm. So this goes through 
if I'm going to wrap this around an arm, I've got a mechanical advantage right here, and then all I do is I post that in there, leave that set. Now what I've got is this ring and the second ring that's here, they both act as pulleys too. You can see on this, this is nothing more than parachute cord because it's easy to replace, and parachute cord is actually is bomber stuff. So now the first, the first jump is a big jump so I can take that slack out, and then all I have to do is overcome the diameter of the parachute cord, and you can feel that starting to get tight, right? Right, yeah. So now I'm, I'm collapsing, so the entire belt has become the tourniquet. And then you can see these little hooks on the windlass. I come here, when I'm done, I stop the bleed. Come here, I just loop that, and boom. Oh man, that hooks in there really well. And it's done. So now I don't have to worry about my windlass coming undone or whatnot. And then, and then that's, that's it. So that was, that was the whole idea around the belt. And then this is something where it's like a no kidding, everyday carry, you can wear this on the plane or you can wear this wherever it is where, hey, you know what, you, maybe you're not carrying or you had to grab something or you're at the, you know, whatever that is. So this is just another option. You know what I like about this other option is it, this very well can be your second option. Yeah. You could carry, you know, a primary uh, tourniquet, <coughs> or this could be your primary tourniquet, and you could have, you know, what I mean, without it being cumbersome whatsoever. Yeah, and and I mean, <coughs> obviously, you know, if you're carrying a pistol or something like that, you're gonna have to figure out something to do with that. Got it. Mm -hmm. But if you're, but if you've got a loved one that's bleeding out. You, you know what? I mean, stick your pistol in your pocket, and then and then pull this off so that you can save a life. Absolutely. Yep. That's absolutely correct. This is my everyday belt that I wear every single day. It's comfortable. I mean, it's stiff enough that I can carry with it, uh -huh. but it's also it's supple enough that that uh, it, it actually fits really well, and it's made out of biothane. Okay. Which is um, it's synthetic. It's essentially it's conveyor belt. Okay. And. Um, with this, it won't it won't rot, it won't mildew, it won't mold. Um, it, you know, it's resilient against stretching out, um, and so it, it's just it's bomber material. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us a little bit about Ready Man. Give us a tour of the facility. Um, talk to us a little bit about the whole Black Rifle Coffee Company, the Rats Tourniquet. So we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Guys, as always, stay savage. There are some things that should be untold